Welcome you all in the second part of the consignment accounting. Let us recall once what we studied in the previous video. We studied about what is consignment, why consignment considering its advantages and disadvantages, and then we studied about the accounting treatment of consignment, in which we studied that there are two parties in the consignment business, the consigner and the consignee where consigner prepares in his books of accounts three different accounts that is consignment account, goods sent on consignment and consignee's account. On the other hand, the consignee also prepares two types of accounts that is consigner's account and commission account. We also studied the basic elements which constitute a consignment account that is all the items which are debited in a consignment account and all the items which are credited in the consignment account briefly of course and today we are going to learn each and every item of the consignment account but before that we have a question in mind that why to prepare consignment account if it is nominal in nature and it also gives us the profit or loss arising out of consignment. To answer this question, I, Aarti Mudalayar, Assistant Professor, the Bhopal School of Social Sciences, I'm going to tell you a story. Now, there was a boutique run by an owner. Now, she had a wide range of handloom products in her hand, out of which she used to prepare beautiful women's range dresses. Her business goes on very well and she used to earn high profits. But one day, a thought came to her mind that how about exploring some new market and expanding business. So she thought of entering into an entirely new range of business that is men's market. She wanted to prepare men's outfit out of the goods available with her, that is the handloom dress material available for the women's range. Now she started preparing men's shirt but before that one thing came to her mind that what about the consumers of this particular new goods. She didn't want to make any capital expenditure like for the showroom for men's art exclusively or for any trial room for men's and all. So she thought of uh, contacting a person or a showroom where her product can be kept for the uh, use of the consumers. One day in a marriage party, she meets her very old friend from NIFT and she used to talk about a lot of, uh, of her business with him. He was also looking for a new range of product for his own men's showroom. And she also came up with the idea of producing men's products out of the handloom garments. Now, his friend also was convinced with this novice idea and agreed to keep these new type of men's shirt in his own showroom because he was already looking for a new range of products. They went into a consignment business wherein this boutique owner would send an consignment to the consignee that is his own friend staying in some other city and he would sell all the products and then remit all the sale proceeds to the boutique owner. In return, he would charge a commission based on the sale proceeds. They started this new business and it went off very well. They started earning huge profits and this consignee also started earning huge commission. Now this went on for a whole long year and then what happened, you know? This boutique owner asked at the end of the year his accountant that how much of profit did she earn out of this consignment business only? Uh-oh, the accountant didn't have any answer to it. Why? Because he never prepared a separate account for this special kind of business. Whatever expenses had incurred or whatever incomes he earned, he used to put all these items in his regular trading and profit and loss account. So that is why they were not able to assess that what amount of profit has been earned out of this consignment business. And there comes the consignment accounts necessary. So in today's video, we are going to learn each and every item constituting the consignment account with a special focus on the valuation of closing stock. But before we value the closing stock, I think it is very necessary for all of us to understand the cost of consignment. So here are the cost of consignment. The cost of consignment constitutes of majorly three elements. Number one, the cost of goods. Number two, consigner's expense. And number three, consignee's expense. Let us start with the cost of goods. 
Well, now cost of goods also constitutes of two features. That is, the opening stock or the opening consignment stock and the goods sent on consignment. Where opening stock is the unsold stock of the previous year which comes as a cost in the current year. Hence, it has to be included as the cost of consignment for the current year. And the goods sent on consignment are the fresh goods which have been sent in the current year to the consignee. Now let's talk about the second element of the debit side of consignment account and that is consigner's expenses. Well, there can be n number of expenses which a consigner may incur and let me tell you all these expenses are non-recurring in nature. These are basically the expenses which are incurred while the transit that is when the consigner sends the goods to the consignee. Different expenses can be insurance, can be freight charges or can be loading charges. Coming to the third element that is consignee's expenses, let me tell you that consignee's expenses can be divided in two parts, the non-recurring expenses and the recurring expenses. Non-recurring expenses again are those expenses which are incurred just once. That is the expenses incurred while receiving the goods and taking it to the go down of the consignee. Now these expenses could include clearance charges, the freight charges that is the charges which have been incurred from a clearing area till the point of his go down and the unloading charges. I hope you have understood that why these expenses are called non-recurring nature because in the life of this particular consignment such expenses would be incurred only once that is the expenses of sending the goods and the expenses of receiving such goods will not be incurred many times in this particular consignment business. Now there are some recurring expenses at the end of consignee. These expenses basically are related to the storing of the stock and selling of the stock. So these expenses could be storage uh, rent, these could be electricity expenses maybe or uh, suppose security expenses or certain expenses of advertisement and sales promotion. One very important expense related to consignee is his own commission. Now these commission have to be calculated very carefully depending on the agreement held between the consigner and the consignee. So let us understand the types of commission. There can be basically three types of commission. One, simple commission. Next, del prede commission and also overriding commission. Now simple commission is simply a percentage calculated on the total sales volume. Whereas del prede commission is usually a commission which is given to expand the sales volume that is to make the credit sales. Now let us understand that if there are credit sales there are chances of bad debts as well. Now who will bear the bad debts? So if the consigner asks the consignee to bear these bad debts because ultimately the customers belong to the consignee. So if any bad debts arise the consignee has to bear the expenses if such is the agreement between the consigner and the consignee then he would ask for a del credit commission which is usually a higher percentage than the simple commission. One more type of commission could be overriding commission. Now this is a special type of commission or you can say an excess commission given over and above the original sale that is when the consignee makes the sale over and above the invoice price of the goods then he charges an extra commission on this excess amount. Well now I hope you have understood all the important elements which are included in the debit side. So now let's come to the credit side. The credit side also constitutes three elements. Number one, sales. Number two, abnormal loss. And number three, consignment stock. Well, understanding about sales is very easy. You simply need to multiply the invoice price per unit with the number of units sold. And that's it. You will get the amount of consignment sales. But this is to be credited with the name of consigner. That is, in the particular column, you have to write by consignee. Now let us understand the most important concept that is the valuation of closing stock or the consignment stock. Now to value the consignment stock the basic formula is the value of goods unsold that is the cost price of the goods unsold plus the non-recurring expenses. 
but mind it when you are taking non recurring expenses focus on the proportionate expenses now let us let us understand it clearly the cost of unsold goods you can derive again very easily that is the cost at which the goods have been sent per unit will be given to you you have to simply multiply it with the units unsold and you will get the cost of unsold goods but you have to add to it all the expenses incurred till this goods have reached to the godown all right so first of all you have to take the proportionate expenses of the consigner now why consigner's expenses are included because by the time the goods have reached the godown consigner had already ex uh, incurred certain expenses the consigner's expense you have to read carefully in the question given that what all expenses have been incurred by him which i have already explained you in the previous part similarly consignee's proportionate expenses have to be taken but find it only non recurring expenses of consignee must be considered so here comes the care which has to be taken while calculating consignee's non recurring expenses so that way you have to consider only the expenses incurred by the consignee till the goods have reached to the godown let us understand it well with the help of an example now suppose the cost of goods sold is worth rupees 2 lakhs now the consignor is incurring three types of expenses that is insurance worth rupees 10000 freight worth rupees 5000 and loading charges worth rupees 5000 so how much is the total expenses incurred by the consigner of course 20000 now comes consignee's non recurring expenses now the consignee is incurring clearance charges worth rupees say 1000 the road freight charges worth rupees 500 and the unloading charges worth rupees 500 So, what is the aggregate of the consignee's non-recurring expense? Of course, two thousand. Now, let us calculate the total cost of goods. The total cost of goods here would be two lakhs. That is the cost of goods, total goods, mind it. The total cost incurred by the consignor, that is twenty thousand, and the total cost non-recurring expense incurred by the consignee, that is two thousand. That makes two lakh twenty two thousand in aggregate. now this is the total cost of goods now suppose total 1000 units have been sent out of which only 100 units are unsold so how you have to calculate consignment stock you have to divide 2 lakh 22000 by 1000 so that you can calculate cost per unit and multiply it by 100 and that gives the value of the consignment stock that is 22200 now by using this very simple method you can always calculate the value of the unsold stock left with the consignee which is to be credited in the credit side of the consignment account sometimes in the question it can be given as a fraction that is one third of the goods or maybe one fourth of the goods have been left unsold or sometimes it can be given in the form of percentage that is 20% or say 10% of the goods are remaining unsold but i hope after calculating the total cost of the goods you will be very easily able to calculate the value of closing stock so that much for now and hope to meet you soon with the valuation of abnormal loss